All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk to you about the most, one of the most important applications of continuity, which is called the intermediate value theorem. So suppose, again, just for a scenario, suppose you are driving on the highway and you start with, let's say, 40 miles per hour. So at zero, you have 40 miles per hour, and then you accelerate up to reaching 80 miles per hour, let's say after one hour. And suppose on this highway, the speed limit is 65. The question is, if will there be a point where you uh, cross the speed limit? Yes if your trajectory is continuous. So that is, if you want, the essence of the intermediate value theorem. But also question, what if the speed limit were 70? Well, not a problem. You would still have at least some time where your speed was 70 miles per hour, where you really crossed the speed limit and this is, as I said, the essence of the, mean, the intermediate value theorem, namely any continuous function attains all the values between the initial value and the final value. So in this case, f attains all the values between 40 and 80. So let me just state that with um, symbols. So suppose f is continuous on AB, then for every n between f of a and f of b, again, for instance here, think n equals 65, there's always some value uh, c such that f of c equals 65. So then there is some c in your interval a, b such that f of c equals n. So just again, just to illustrate this with a little picture, suppose again you have a function f like here, and that's from a to b, and let's say this is f of a, and this is f of b, and f could be squiggly like this, maybe let me exaggerate this a little bit, so this is f, then, no matter which number you pick between f of a and f of b, you guarantee that f crosses this line at least on some point. In other words, there is always some c such that f of c equals n. And there might be many of such values, but we guarantee there's at least one. And you may ask, why is this useful? It's actually useful in some sense to solve equations. In other words, to show that equations at least have some solutions. So here's a couple of applications. Um, for instance, yeah, let me erase the statement. Because again, the picture is what's very important here. Um, for instance, let's show that x cubed x to the fourth plus x equals three has at least one solution in the interval one comma two. And um, if you try to solve this directly, you would be in trouble because it turns out, well, you can't solve it, but it's very hard. Instead, let's try to use the intermediate value theorem. So let f of x it be x to the fourth plus x, and that's a continuous function on the interval one, two. So that's very important. Now, let's figure out f of one. f of one is one plus one, which is two. f of two equals 
2 to the fourth plus 2, which is uh, uh, 18. Fix that. Um, so what scenario do we have here? So we have this function. This is 1 and this is 2. It is 2 at 1. It is uh, 18 at 2. It might squiggle back and forth, maybe like this. And the question is, if you like, this is equivalent to showing that f of x equals 3 somewhere. Well, the intermediate value theorem says no matter which value between 2 and 18 you pick, f has to cross the line somewhere. In particular, if you pick the line y equals 3, you're guaranteed to have one solution. So, in other words, let m be 3, and that m is between 2 and 18. So by the intermediate value theorem, f of x equals 3 has at least one solution in the interval of 1, 2. In other words, there is at least some point where x to the fourth plus x equals 3. So you see, this is very interesting because we're able to show that this equation has a solution without even solving it. We can do more than that. Maybe let's move on with the following example. Um, how about we do f of x? So what about the following one? Show cosine of x equals x has at least one solution. And here, I didn't even write down the interval, which makes it a little bit harder. But in other words, picture-wise, what we want to show is that this is cosine. This is x. So y equals x. And what we want to show is that cosine intersects that line at least once. And the question is, how do we deal with those two variable equations? Well, the best thing is just to subtract them. So let f of x be cosine of x minus x. And what we want to show is that f of x has at least one zero. So show f of x equals zero somewhere. Why? Because that would mean cosine of x minus x equals zero. So cosine of x would be equal to x. Now, the question is, how do we show that the function equals zero somewhere? Well, here's a neat little trick. It's enough to find some point where f is positive and some other point where f is negative or vice versa, because notice if f is positive here and then becomes negative, it would have to cross the x-axis somewhere. And the question is then, which points do we plug in? So this is n equals zero. Well, just try to pick some points where the function is easy to evaluate. So, for instance, pick x equals 0, then f of 0 is cosine of 0 minus 0, and that's 1. Okay. So, f of 0 equals 1. And now, for instance, we have many choices, but let's pick pi. You could also do a pi over 2, completely fine. f of pi, it's cosine of pi. So again, this is positive. It's cosine of pi minus pi. And that's minus 1 minus pi 
which is negative. So this point becomes minus pi minus 1, which is negative. So you see you have a continuous function that goes from a positive number to a negative number. So really, by the intermediate value theorem, it has to cross the x-axis somewhere. So let's finish this. So in other words, f is continuous on 0 pi. So by the intermediate value theorem, with n equals 0, which is between f of 0 and f of pi, we get that uh, f of x equals 0 has at least one solution. And therefore, this function cosine of x um, has to cross the line y equals x somewhere. And by the way, those points, they're very interesting. So solutions of cosine of x equals x, they're interesting. They're sometimes what are called fixed points. And namely, it's exactly what you think it is. It's a point x such that if you apply cosine to it, you get the same thing. For instance, 1 is a fixed point of square root, because square root of 1 is 1. And in other words, if you plug in this number in your calculator and you do cosine of answer, your answer shouldn't change. And fixed points are really cool. For instance, let me give you a neat application. I do have my Austrian snow globe here. So one application of fixed points is, if there's a fixed point here, then it means there's one snow flake that started at the position and that ends up at the same position. Which, it's not obvious, but it is true. Or also, if you point at the map, there must be some position where that gives you the location of the finger pointing at the map. So, how cool is that? Last but not least, I just want to tell you uh, one little warning though. It's very important that f is continuous. Otherwise, the intermediate value theorem doesn't hold. So f must be continuous. Because here's an example. What if f of x is x squared plus 1 here and minus x squared minus 1 here? Question, is there some value where f is 0? Well, the answer is no. So there is no no c such that f of c equals 0, which here is n. And so because f has a jump here, it doesn't really attain all its values. So it's very important that f must have no jump. And also it's important that the domain be an interval or at least a connected set because otherwise the intermediate value theorem doesn't hold either. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.